I made a mistake. I made a mistake. Look, I'm telling you, because I'm going through these mistakes, I don't want you to go through them. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing the mistake that I made, yeah, this guy, and I will be discussing ways to prevent this um, from happening to you because look, this, this mistake cost me money and I hate wasting money. I mean, I hate wasting money. Hey, how's it going, guys? It's Paul with Spheric Reptiles, and I thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Of course, you saw the title, you saw the thumbnail. Who's the daddy? So this is something that happened, and I had seen it, kind of heard about it, but then I got caught up. And I did some things and I kind of got in a rush and I thought, well, this one animal isn't ready and I made a mistake. So what I'm talking about is the chance of you having a dual sire clutch. Yeah, so two baby daddies. So who's the daddy? Um, so what I did was I paired up this guy, Bruce Wayne. He is our yellow belly Batman. So it's a yellow belly leopard spot nose clown. And I put him in once with, uh, you know, Shirley and I thought well Shirley is a double head lavender pie and I put him in with her thinking that okay Just keep her going. I wasn't really sure that the male that I had that I really wanted to use was ready And I didn't observe any locks. I didn't observe a single lock and this guy I put him up there again uh, He proved me fucking wrong. Let me tell you so but the whole thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to pair Aximus that is our blackhead confusion leopard lavender pie or a dream sickle. Um, I wanted him to do the job. So I just didn't think that he was ready. Now he had the size and then I popped him for sperm plugs before I paired up Bruce again, because we do our pairings when we're breeding um, just once a month. And I noticed he had sperm plugs and he was generating sperm. And I'm like, okay, I weighed him. He was, he was of weight, he was eating. And I started putting him in and I started observing locks. I started observing locks every month until she went off of food, then she went through ovulation. And of course, after they go off food, I still pair up one more time just to make sure. And so I even did that. And, you know, let, 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 let me just show you what I got, man, because this to me is something that can happen to you. And let me tell you, it, it, it bewilders you beyond belief. And the only way that you can get by it, like you can't really sell an, anybody an animal that's maybe head clown and then maybe head dream sickle. I mean, that's just not right. So it's going to cost you money in genetic testing, but I'm going to go ahead and show you these animals. So the first one is, this is cottonwood and they just ate yesterday. So I won't disturb them too much, but cottonwood is a leopard confusion lavender that's head for pie. And so when I saw her, I was like, oh, okay. Of course y'all saw the video. I thought, well, all the animals must just be like this one, but I, I'm gonna show you another one. So this is cottonwood. So just keep these in mind. And now I'll go for the other one that made me think that uh, Maximus, our dream sickle male, did the job. So the next one that we had was this one. And this is Sequoia. I'm still learning her names, but you can see that she's a blackhead leopard without a doubt. So she's a blackhead leopard, lab, I mean, double head for lavender and pie. And so that's two things or two animals that I really just thought hit the nail on the head. I mean, I, I'm going, right? So I, I run the genetic test. I sent it to RGI and I tested for lavender and leopard because they don't have a confusion. So I had to do a lot of research and looking at photos to see which ones were um, hit for confusion, right? Because we know that our male is confusing because of his crazy pattern. So let me show you. So this is Willow and Willow is a leopard confusion that's double head for lavender and pied and this is sycamore sycamore is double head for lavender and pied and i'll turn them this way and you can see those head stamps there as i just rolled her up onto her head i'm sorry baby i'm so sorry i'm so sorry but you can see you can look at the eyes and you can tell that these are definitely different so what i know about dream sickles is that their eyes are a little bit lighter because Normally, the albinos have all red eyes, so a half-breed should have some discolored eyes. So it'll be lighter or something, right? And did I have another one? Um, 
I did that one, that one. Okay, no, I don't. So, yes, I have one more. Just to show you guys the confusion that's double head for lavender pie. So all of these guys look the same. It's kind of like that Sesame Street thing where you got the four blocks and then you're like, which one of these things is not like the others? All of these tested to be head for lavender albino. So, all right, so we got these guys, right? This is, I think this is two females and a male, right? So I'm like, all right, all right, let me send in more tests because I tested the entire clutch. And this is what we got right here. Was it? I messed up on that part. No, I did not. So I thought I messed up. I'm, I'm, I'm just kicking it to y'all like I see it, right? So this guy is from the same clutch. And what I'll do is I will push one of these up and I will show you. So you can tell that there is some difference here. That this one tested to be not lavender head for lavender albino. I'm thinking that when I test all these animals that, you know, I got a visual lavender albino, which you've already seen. I got a visual blackhead leopard that that can only come from one male. And I'm thinking, all right, so he sired the whole clutch. I'm like, yes, that, that's a win. But no, I, I've lost. So when I got the results for this guy, and he's 250504-M, he's a leopard question mark. And so... I got the results from RGI and I was very excited. I'm going through all because I didn't just test this clutch. I tested all the clutches for our season, right? Um, and I saw that this was negative. So I got in touch with Sean and Ben over at RGI and they're, they're super helpful guys. And I'm sure, and Charlie's just as helpful too, but this is one of the things that we need from. So I was like, hey, you know, I saw that the results were not what I expected. It looks like I might have a dual side clutch, but I let them know that in advance. So, Dr. Morrow got back with me and he said, um, you know, if you have a dual sire, it could actually happen. And I'm like, he's right. Because each one of these is a single egg, right? When they're the follicle is a single follicle. So I don't know where the, where this guy, um, Hickory was located, but wherever Hickory was located, he got Bruce Wayne sperm. So his egg got, um, definitely, it got fertilized with that sperm to that egg and it closed off and encapsulated. So maybe with maximum sperm, it just wasn't enough or whatever, but either way, this is the results I got and it shocked me. So now I'm back to square one to where I know that these are lavenders because they tested head for lavender. I know that this one is not, so I'm going to have to do a full panel shed test on him just to get everything out the way. I just want to save all the confusion. The full panel test does cost more money, but I think that it's a bigger bang for the buck. It'll test for acid as well, so that I'll get to see that old test for everything. And I found some good things from doing the full panel test on some other animals that just really surprised me. Um, so I'm gonna have to do this again, but I wouldn't have to do this if I wouldn't have made the mistake in planning or getting in a rush and putting in Bruce Wayne, our Batman yellow belly, with Shirley first, instead of just waiting and checking Maximus one month later. So that was a flaw in our business plan. And one of the, oh, now that was a flaw in our business plan. So that's one that's going to cost me money, right? So I'll have to test all of these for pie, the ones that tested for lavender, just because I want to be sure that I'm giving the customers what they pay for, right? So if I say something has it and I genetic tested it, I definitely want to test for the recessive traits and th anything that's available so that whenever a customer buys from us, they can have peace of mind that they're getting what they pay for because that's what I want. This is 100% avoidable. And what I mean by that is that, and this is something that we put in our business plan that I will add to our business plan and our management system. We got an SOP or standards of operation for these animals, right? Just to make sure that I'm doing things right and it's consistent because I want to check myself. Um, and we give it to anybody who wants it that buys an animal from us or you can get it for free just by going to sphericreptiles.com and, and asking for it through info at sphericreptiles.com anyway that's a small plug um yeah but this is 100 percent avoidable so i got five steps just five on how you can prevent this from happening and if you follow these steps then you won't have to worry about this again all right so number one commit to one male commit to one you know don't make her out to be a fast woman, right? Don't trick her 
into introducing one male and she's like, oh, he smells good. And then another one, oh, he smells good too. Don't do that to her. Respect them, man. You got to respect the game of these female ball pythons because they're doing all of this for you. Like they, they really do love that you're the food daddy or the food mommy. And I just think it's fair, right? It's fair because I'm, I'm telling her to make some eggs. I'm, I'm, I'm praying to her. I'm giving the water. I'm singing to them. I'm doing all these things. But at the end of the day, choose one male. And <laughs> so let me put a, a, a add on. So if you use another male, make sure it's of the same recessive traits, right? So if you're doing lavender albino and you want to use a backup, that's okay because your baby should still be lavender albino pied or whatever dream sickle. If you're using a clown and you want to get silly, make sure that the other guy is a clown. So at least you know that you're getting all clowns, even if you make a mistake everywhere else on the incomplete dominant traits, which you can do because there's over 8,000 different combinations, at least you'll be clowned or you'll be dream sickle. So you'll either be dreaming or you'll be silly. So I think that's the best way to go. Um, you know, so number two, wait at least two to three months. If you do make the mistake of introducing a male, wait two to three months before you introduce another male. Now, that's the best that I can come up with from the research that I've done and from talking. Um, but that's the best that I, advice that I can give. But that doesn't guarantee because these females, if they, if they don't go through the whole breeding, they can actually hold on to sperm for up to the next season. So if you do that, then it might just be, it might just be the end of your breeding season. I hate to say that, but that will save you more time and money than actually having to go out and go through ovulation and doing the prelay shed all that time. And then 55 to 60 days later, the eggs, and then you get them out, they got a shed, you collect the shed, then you send it off to RGI, you fork off money, and then what? You get it back and it says that they're dual sired. And then you got to fork off more money. And then you got to wait on that. And then maybe you got a vacation planned or something. And then, but at the end of the day, this could have all been avoided. So if that happens to where you make the mistake, you might just want to stop right there. So for number three, and this is something that you can do. I did it with my males because I just wanted to know. With one of them, I found out afterwards, but it costs a little bit more money. But shed test all the animals or your males that are in question, right? We want to know what genes are going off. So if you have visuals, test the visuals. So if you're breeding double heads, then breed them, you'll get some visuals, right? You're hoping if you breed a visual to any kind of head, it's 50% per the visual to head. Now, if you go down and to get the double visuals, it's 25%, but that's another video that you can see right here on those percentages. Number four, record every single lock, every introduction, Every time they look at each other and they're in the same container, record it from start to finish. If you view a lock, record it. If you, when you put them together, put it down, how long you got them in there, everything. Because the more information you have, the better off you'll be able to make a determination as to when that female starts going through ovulation. Because when she stops on food, you can see some weight gain. You can see these follicle growths. You can see everything. If you're measuring follicles, record them. Everything. Because that is the key. That's only if you only stick with one male or the same recessive type, right? So the number five, and this is the last thing, and I hope that all of this is helpful for you, just avoid overlapping projects again. Like we're gonna go back to square one. Don't put this guy, Bruce Wayne, in there and then put this guy, Maximus, in there. I mean, what, what, what are we doing? I mean, that's what I said when I, when I got those results. I was at work and I was looking at them. I was like, man, what the hell was I doing? What was I thinking? It was a small error to make because we were using an Excel spread at that time and it just lapsed me. But then once I realized it, I was like, man, that's crazy. So I ended up finding out that the other male that I wanted, Maximus, he was ready and I put him in there and he went. But, you know, I got my hopes all up high and now I'm having to spend more money for having high hopes. This is crazy. It's like, like I'm trying to play the lottery right now. But this is what you got to do if you're breeding ball pythons and you want to keep your name out there in a positive way you got to do these extra tests whenever you fuck up right and so i feel like this is something that i messed up on so this is what i'm doing um like i said there's over eight thousand ball python combinations out there right now and there's 50 to 70 known incomplete single dominant traits whether they're recessive or they're they're not recessive those traits is about 50 to 70 different ones of them out there so 
yeah, it's going to get harder and harder as we find new combinations and things like that. Um, but 8,000 is a lot. So you might have to genetic test anyway, but man, I hope that this video helped you so that you're not producing dual sire clutches. It's hot in here still, man. It's always hot in here. Snake room is always where the heat's at. But hey, if you like this type of video, please like and subscribe because it does help the channel. It does help the YouTube algorithm to push stuff out. But more importantly, more importantly, as I get my words right, I'm always getting tongue tied. Maybe I just talk too much. I'm interested in your comments. Please leave your comments because your comments actually help us to grow, right? So I'm doing this video to help you. And I want you to let me know what you're doing or what you've done to prevent this or what, when it happened, what, it, what happened. I want to know because it helps me too. I directly respond to every comment. Um, but that's it, guys. That's what I got for you. Hopefully, this is something that will help you. And thank you so much for watching this journey as we go through it. Enjoy that time that you spend with your reptiles. And please, please cherish and love your family that you have because time is so short. Thank you. Thank you.